Hey folks, I just wanted to record a quick video um, talking about Jupyter Lab versus Jupyter Notebook. So I've started using Jupyter Lab over the last few days um, and I found it to be, um, it's, it's great. Um, it's really helped speed up um, how I work uh, within uh, within Python uh, using a Jupyter Notebook. Lots of you are probably already using Jupyter Lab and that's fine. Um, you probably could tell me a thing or two about the various different features and, and functionality. But what I wanna do in this very short video I'll try and keep it as short as I can, is just highlight um, why you should consider moving over to Jupyter Lab if you're only using Jupyter Notebooks. Um, in, particular if, in particular, if you're using or taking my courses um, and you're just following me using Jupyter Notebooks, um, Jupyter Lab is really worth a look. So I'll just kind of show you some of the things that I like about, uh, about Jupyter Lab and, and hopefully you'll see the benefits of using them. So, okay, so if you've taken um, my courses, you're used to working in a Jupyter Notebook and you're used to the file explorer, right? So this is your standard file explorer. You know, you can navigate to your file and then, you know, open your file up and you'll end up in something like this, which is a standard Jupyter Notebook. And that's fine. Um, but... What you'll end up having is if, you, if you're doing a lot of development with Jupyter Notebooks, you'll end up having loads of tabs open, loads of browser tabs open with different notebooks running, and it's all a little bit clunky. Um, so what Jupyter Lab is, it's like um, an integrated development environment for Jupyter Notebooks. Um, and so if you're used to developing or doing any other development work, um, so for example, I, I write a lot of JavaScript to do development work on the Degree Tutors website, and I use a, 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 an IDE, an integrated development environment called Visual Studio Code for that. And it makes my life a lot easier. It just streamlines the process of development because it has a lot of the tools that I need at my fingertips. Jupyter Lab brings that to Jupyter Notebooks, right? Jupyter Lab, how do you get to it? Well, if you're used to opening up your notebooks uh, by going to the Anaconda Navigator, well, let me bring up the Navigator. So instead of in here going and hitting launch on Jupyter Notebook, just hit launch on Jupyter Lab, it's that simple. If you open up your notebooks using um, the terminal, um, so if you type in, let me see, it was last, I must have done it recently. Yeah, if you type in Jupyter Notebook here and hit enter, you'll get your file explorer window open up, but instead of hitting Jupyter Notebook, instead of typing that, type in Jupyter Lab, and Jupyter Lab will open up, right? So when Jupyter Lab, oh, I won't do it now because I've got loads of stuff already open, but when Jupyter Lab opens up, what you'll end up with is, this okay so this is this is now Jupyter Lab right so this is what's called your launcher you can launch new notebooks here and you know various different other file types that you can you can open up so let's imagine um I open up a file that we already have so that kind of raises the question well how do I navigate to a file I already have well one of the first really great features within this whole environment is a nice file explorer so if I go to I've already navigated to a to a file but if I go this is my file explorer here if I, let me see, I've got a file path up here, so let's jump back one directory here. So this is um, this is your file view, basically. So you can navigate to whatever file you wanna open. So we navigate to, uh, let's just open up our antenna tower from the last course, and uh, we can double click on a file, and that will open up, that will open up the, uh, in this case, the antenna tower file. So this is exact, it's the exact same notebook. You don't need to change any of the code. It's all the exact same. It's just we're viewing it using Jupyter Lab. Everything lives under the one, ta under the one tab, under the one browser tab here right so instead of previously where we had our file explorer and then every time we open up a new file we have a new browser tab now everything is in the one browser tab and then obviously within that we've got these different tabs which is where all our different notebooks will open up so that's um that's a nice little thing all the things i'm going to talk about are just kind of small speed improvements or efficiency improvements or usability improvements but together they all add up like i say i'm using this the last couple of days now and i found it to be you know a real pleasure to use right what else have i got for you there is by default there is dark mode in jupyter lab like for me this on its own would be would have been a worthwhile enough reason to switch right because everything on my computer is dark theme and when i go and open up a jupyter notebook and i get hit with that white it's pretty full on when i'm used to looking at dark so we just go to to, to change your theme default theme is going to be white when you open this up first if you go to settings theme and it's as simple as just clicking uh, dark mode so there was a way to get dark mode in Jupyter notebooks and um, which you had to download um, and install uh, different uh, packages and it was a bit messy it was a bit tedious I did it but it, you know it was a bit of a bit of a headache and um, so it's just nice to have a default dark mode okay what else have we got we've talked about the file explorer and um, yeah you can open other file types right so if I there's an there's an image here that was generated the last time I ran this particular notebook so if I 
just double click that image in the file explorer it will open up the image right in here where i'm where i'm already living where i'm already working so that's kind of nice the other thing is if i open up my data folder here and if i open up a csv file we get a nice a nice view of the data so instead of having to open up excel or whatever and you know going between two windows i can just look at my data in here and it gives it a nice kind of an excel look which is um, which i think is quite good right what else have we got now section index so you'll you'll notice here if again if you're familiar with visual studio code it's this kind of has the same the same layout right so you've got these tabs on the very far left hand side here right so we're currently in i've collapsed it now we'll bring it back again we're currently in the file explorer window right i can go down and i can see a list of all of my running notebooks running kernels but basically it's just the different running notebooks i'm running at the minute and um, but what i want what i want to talk to you about is this index right so this is an index of the current notebook of all of the different sections so every time i put in a new header like a h1 or a h2 or a h3 it will generate the uh, the heading over here and that's really really nice because as you know with our notebooks, they end up getting really, really long, and you end up doing an awful lot of this, scrolling up and down, right? So you change something at the top, hit run, and then scroll all the way down to the bottom and see what's happening. So with your uh, with your index, you can just jump around to the different sections of your notebook by clicking on the index. And it seems like a silly little thing, but it makes a huge difference. Um, and so one extra little thing that I've started doing is, in fact, if I jump over to a different notebook to show you, uh, here we go. So kind of a sneak peek of, of what I'm working on for the next, uh, the next course here. But the reason I'm showing you this is that here is the same index. Now I've been a little bit more careful about how I'm, I'm using my headings in this particular notebook right so i'm i'm being careful about the 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 heading type whether it's a h1 a h2 or a h3 because that allows me to collapse down different sections so i sort of break the, the notebook up with that in mind but what i wanted to show you was like in this particular notebook that I'm, I'm sort of building and developing at the minute, what, what I'm ending up doing is I'm going between the same two or three different sections of the notebook all of the time, right? So I'm, I'm going between the manual data, the plot of the structure before I've done anything to it to make sure it all looks okay, um, my main um, execution loop and so the main output, and then the results, right? So I, I'm jumping between the same four sections all the time. So instead of having to read each of these on the left, what I've done is, I just basically, it's simple, right? Just paste in a little emoji here into the title, which means the emoji then appears over in the left-hand side. And so I can kind of at a glance, I can just jump to the little, the little yellow hands and that and i mean you can put different emojis in for different meanings whatever you want but that is a really nice little um little speed up feature uh the next one is uh well you're kind of looking at it here right so this is this this is the same notebook it's two different views of the same notebook and that again is a huge benefit because again what i'm doing at the minute is i'm tweaking and changing these input parameters and i'm hitting run and then i'm wanting to see what the results are so instead of having to move around the notebook in the in like over here, instead of having to go up and down, up and down, or even clicking my my index, I can leave this side, this right hand panel, over the results section, and then I can leave this over the data input section and then so basically the two most important parts of my notebook i have kind of always on screen um, and there's no i don't think there's any limit to the amount of different views of the same notebook you can have now if i change anything in the right hand side here it automatically changes in the left because it's the same notebook right so um and of course the other thing to say is like i can just grab that and move it around like the layout is flexible like it'll snap to different locations so to do that right click on the notebook and then simply hit new view for this notebook hit it there and let me see well then now we've got a third view and i could say grab that and sort of let me see what i do like drop it down there or something now i've got three different views of the same notebook so again it's really really helpful i really like it um so you can kind of get to see that you know comparing this to you know let me see where was i comparing that to this scenario where i'm sort of you know the bog standard Jupyter notebook it's kind of you're only you only have to use Jupyter lab for an hour or two and you're like god i'm never going back um right so what else did i want to talk to you about we've got split screen debugging right so we've got inbuilt debugging within uh, a Jupyter notebook now when we use Jupyter lab so let's go back over here uh was it this one um no it was this one here 
All right, so this was our um, our antenna tower. Right, so if I want, I'll start with a simpler, well, I'll just show you a simpler example. Let's imagine I had a, a code, right? Now, if you're if you're used to MATLAB, the way debug, or I guess, it, it, you know, a lot of different IDEs have uh, inbuilt debugging, but what I'm most familiar with is using MATLAB um, because prior to me starting to use Jupyter Notebooks, I lived in MATLAB for years and did all my work there. Um, and that had a really nice inbuilt debugging feature, and it was a real lifesaver when you're trying to find where is there a problem in your code um, and so basically we have it now in uh, in Jupyter Labs so if I this is a simple example here right so I've got a, a test function takes in two parameters a and b it does something to them it generates an output and it returns that output so we can call the function and then I'm just printing the result here right but let's imagine like I, there's something wrong here I'm getting a bug or an error or something and I want to go through this function line by line all right basically I just want to go to the code line by line so what you do is over on the right side here click on the debug button, right? And what debugging, I don't wanna to, want to explain debugging in any great detail, but other than just say, you know, it's useful, it's here, right? So let's say I wanted to execute line by line here. If I put a breakpoint in here and then hit run all cells, it will only run to the first breakpoint. So the first thing it ends up executing is this, which is the function call. The sort of execution sequence then goes into the function, executes the first line, and then stops at the second line, right, where the breakpoint is. So you can see over on the right-hand side here, I've got the values of all of my variables. And if you're used to doing any kind of um, error, error, bug hunting, I suppose you could say, you know how valuable this is, how helpful it is to be able to see all of your variables as the code is running. And so I can now execute the code line by line. So I can sort of, I can go on to the next line, and uh, let me see this one here. All right, so we've now evaluated what B1 is. B1 is equal to two. When I go to the next line, it's gonna evaluate this line of code and we'll get a new variable over here, which is C. So let's try that. Okay, there you are, C is equal to six. And so again, trivial example, but you kind of get the idea. It allows you to step through your code bit by line by line and see what's happening. So I find that to be, um, well, I haven't actually used that too much, I have to be honest. But when I was living in MATLAB land, I used that a lot. So have I got anything else to tell you? I suppose the last thing to just point out is the extensions tab. So um, there's a tab here where we can we can basically install different extensions. Now, I haven't installed any extensions yet, um, but when I'm in... VS Code, I end up do, using this a lot, you know, in installing community extensions, and I expect over time um, I'll come across helpful extensions, and it should be easy for me to find them in here and install them directly into Jupyter Lab. So that's basically it. That's all I really wanted to say. Moving forward, all of the Degree Tutors courses are, I'm, I'm almost certainly, until I find something better, um, I'm going to be, you know, delivering them and, and, and what have you through Jupyter Lab. But at the start of the next course, um, I'll talk a little bit more about it for anybody kind of not yet transitioned over. Um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about how to do that transition. So there you have it. I found it to be brilliant. For those of you who have been um, been using it for a long time already, I know I'm, I'm kind of late to the, the party, as I say. Um, but if you haven't started using it yet, um, I know I'd heard about it you know, I had heard about it and uh, I just kind of dismissed it because it was like, you know, I just don't have time to be thinking about that. But then YouTube surfaced a video to me. So thanks to the YouTube algorithm. Um, and someone basically recorded a video just like this one um, showing me how good it was. And so I thought, well, I tell my people about that because um, it's going to be really helpful for us, uh, you know, writing our, uh, our structural analysis codes. Right. Let me look down through my list here. Was there anything else? No. That's it. So hopefully um, you'll take a look. Um, if you don't have time to take a look now uh, and you just want to wait until the next course comes out and I'll sort of talk you through, uh, talk you through this again, um, that's fine. That's cool. Speaking of the next course, as you saw here, I'm, I'm working on it. Um, code is uh, code's running. Uh, code's working. Um, obviously, there's more bells and whistles I want to I want to add to it. Um, so I'll keep you posted in a separate post about uh, how the uh, the course is going. So that's it for this one. Uh, have a good rest of your week and uh, speak soon.